Hey, can you see it? That's BB's footprint from when he was napping on my forehead this morning. <laughs> hey, Scott here, Scotty's Animals. I'm with Gary. Gary has a special cuddle cup that was made by Irene from DNAFI, which actually means the sewing fairy. And as you can see, this is a amazing little cuddle cup. It's got a um, replaceable pad. She sent me a bunch of pads, so I don't have to wash this one pad every day. You like it, Gary? You can hang out and you can you can talk to these boys while I'm shooting a video. Is that okay? Ow! Let go, let go. Let go. <laughs> so how do you know if something is in your guinea pig's best interest or if it's just some crazy idea that you had that really isn't in their best interest? I'm Scott, I'm a volunteer at the LA Guinea Pig Rescue, and people come in and they ask me all sorts of questions. Gary, I think I have one of your fuzzies on my face. People come in and they ask me questions like, can I put a harness on my guinea pig and we can uh, go walking around the neighborhood? People will show me a picture of a modified dresser that they have converted into a guinea pig cage where there's plexiglass and a whole bunch of levels and really not much airflow. Some people ask me, can I put my guinea pig in my purse and go walking around Beverly Hills? And some people want to know if it's okay for their guinea pigs to go swimming in a pool. Occasionally, we have teachers that come into the rescue and they want a guinea pig for their, their classroom mascot. But some people, you know, they want to know if it's okay for them to dress up their piggies, you know, like put a cute little hat on them and take some photos. So there is a really wide range of ideas that we have, things that we, we think about doing with our piggies, and how do we know if it's right for them? How do we know if it's good? How do we know if it's in their best interest? So in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the specific things that some people have come in and asked about, and then we're also going to try to figure out a way of knowing whether or not it's in their best interest. So you wanna ask yourself, why are you doing this? Is this some idea that you've just had in your head? Or is this something that you read about? Or are you really just trying to do what's best for them and give them the best life? Because a lot of times, you know, we have these funny or cute ideas and we think, oh, well, it won't hurt them. And, and maybe it won't, but maybe it will. So let's go through a couple examples. I wrote down a couple examples here, and let's just go through them. I mentioned some of them in the intro, but let's, let's get it into it a little bit more in depth. Bibi, you wanna come over here and sit on my shoulder too? Come here, Bibi. Let's, let's see how long we can have Bibi sit here. Okay, so I mentioned the guinea pig harness. Do guinea pigs want to wear a harness and go walking down the street? Okay, that was about five seconds. Do guinea pigs want to be put into a harness and walk down the street? I would say probably not. The harnesses, depending on what they are, may or may not even be good for their backs. Some of them might be too tight, they might squirm, they probably are not gonna be comfortable, and it's certainly not natural for them to wanna to wear. You know, some leashes go around the neck, and that's definitely not appropriate. The little harnesses that go around their whole body, even if you're pulling on a leash, it may not hurt them, but I'm sure it's not gonna be comfortable, and it's probably not gonna be a perfect fit. Not to mention the fact that if you take your guinea pigs outside and you're just walking around the neighborhood, guinea pigs are afraid of wide open spaces because remember they're prey animals. Not to mention they don't understand the concept of going for a walk like a dog would and they are not gonna walk in a straight line. They're not gonna heal with you and it's probably not good on their feet to walk on the sidewalk or even the grass they're just gonna stop and try to eat the grass and it's not going to be good on their feet. They could get 
uh, exposed to spiders and other parasites. Just overall, not a good idea. So you've got to ask yourself, why do you want your guinea pig to be walking around on a leash? Is it just because you think it would be a cute idea? I don't know if that's necessarily good enough. Hi, Gary. So in that vein, let's talk about putting your guinea pig in a purse and walking around Beverly Hills to go shopping. Now, there are plenty of really wonderful guinea pig carriers. And the most important thing about a guinea pig carrier is that it keeps them safe. And so it's got to have good airflow. It's got to be padded. And it's you're going to want something that if you're keeping them in it for a little while, that you know, it doesn't get gross and dirty real quickly. You'd be surprised how often people come in to the rescue for health checks or for whatever reason, and the guinea pigs are in a carrier or a box or something that has no bedding in it, no pads, nothing, and they're slipping and sliding around in their pee and poop, and they get extremely dirty and gross, and as soon as they get to the rescue, we say, you, you know, this piggy needs a bath, because their feet have wet, pee and caked poop all over them. So if you're going to carry them around, it's important that you do it with an appropriate carrier. Now, what would be the point of taking them shopping with you? Honestly, do guinea pigs need fresh air? Sure. Do they need sunlight? Yeah. A window is nice. Taking them out in the yard in a playpen for 15, 20 minutes so they can get some sunshine, that couldn't hurt as long as you're careful that there's no pests out in the yard. But really think about what your motivation is. If you just think it would be cute to pop them in a little Paris Hilton purse and carry them around Beverly Hills just to show them off, then I'm not sure if that's in the best interest for them. You could accidentally drop them. Someone could bump into them. There's just a million unknowns. And the most important thing is keeping them safe. That's your job. You're being so good, Gary. So is it appropriate to take them with you when you go shopping? I don't know. I don't think so. The question you'd want to ask yourself is, would they be better off? Would they be safer if you just left them home? Is their cage environment so boring that you need to carry them around with you everywhere? I don't think you do. Now, talking about emotional support animals is a whole nother topic. But do you really need to carry your guinea pig around with you in order for you to feel emotionally secure and whatever? I don't know that you do. And I think that if you did need a 24-7 emotional support animal next to you with you at all times, which I'm not knocking that. I understand that that is a thing. But I think that there might be other animals that are more appropriate. So that's something to think about, and that's a whole separate topic. If you guys would like to talk about it in the comments, um, I would be really interested to see what you guys think about that. Because I know that guinea pigs, especially in times like these, can be really wonderful animals to uh, keep your emotions regulated. For their, you know, you're giving them love, they're giving you love. Guinea pigs are wonderful. But does that mean that you have to drag them with you everywhere you go? I don't think so. So, okay, now let's talk about these modified dressers. People come into the rescue, I have two stories. More generically, people come in, so many times people have showed me pictures on their phone of some crazy wooden thing that they've built. Sometimes it's a modified dresser. Very frequently, it's some kind of modified bookshelf or dresser that they've taken the drawers out of and put like plexiglass or something like that, but they're not very wide. They're usually multi-level. And I want to ask, why did you do this instead of just building them a simple CNC cage? CNC cages are so easy to clean. Usually the answer is something like, well, I had the dresser. Um, or they'll say something like, I spent a lot of time on it. Sometimes people will show me pictures of these massive wooden constructions that they've built a lot of times without looking to see what guinea pig cages really require. And so people have made these big things out of wood. 
one person told me, you know, I spent hundreds of dollars worth of wood. And so this is the cage that they're going to live in. And, you know, I'm just so perplexed. I'm like, well, you know, you can make a CNC cage for around $40 and it's light. It's very easy to clean. You can make them, you know, very attractive because you can use different color coroplast, the book report spines that they have, you can put alongside. Check out guineapigcages.com because even though they are selling them at retail, what they've done to make these cages, they've really taken them to the next level. So many color choices, so many design choices, and all the bells and whistles. So if you're not feeling quite up to building one of these, which honestly, it's you just snap them together. You just zip tie them. Bada bing, bada boom, you're done. But if you want some inspiration or if you just have unlimited funds and you just want to get the best, guineapigcages.com is definitely the best guinea pig cages out there. One, one more point about the cages. This one guy came in once to the rescue. This is a few years ago. And he came in and he was looking for a buddy for his guinea pig. And he said, do you have any babies? Because we really want a baby. And when we finally got to the part where we said, well, what kind of cage do they live in? He showed us a picture of a ferret cage. Now this is, if you can Google ferret cages, this was a wire bottom, three level ferret cage with ramps. It wasn't very wide. It was three levels at least. And it had a wire bottom, which they didn't cover with anything. And he said, I would like a baby so I could teach the baby to run up and down the ramps and to be comfortable with this cage. And there was nothing special about the cage. It was completely inappropriate for guinea pigs, but it wasn't like this was a multiple hundred dollar cage that... It doesn't matter how much something costs, how much it's worth, how much you've spent on it, if it's inappropriate then why are you grasping at it? What's the point? <laughs> I don't know. But the guy basically didn't want to see any other piggies except for babies because he was convinced that a baby would be easy to train to run up and down the ramp. That's Nate, by the way, with the insatiable thirst. So long story short, Saskia said, you know, Unless you're committed to giving them appropriate, you know, the appropriate cage, which is a CNC or a Midwest at the minimum, then we just can't, we, you just can't adopt from us. He then said, well, the wife wants what she wants. And they basically straight up said, we're going to go to the pet store and, and get a, a guinea pig that, you know, where there's no requirements or restrictions. But... We don't put these requirements and restrictions because we're jerks. We have minimum requirements for the care of guinea pigs because those are what they require. We have, over many years, Saskia has determined the, the best things for them. And look online. There's a whole community of people. Now... There is a wide range of, for instance, cages, for instance, diet. There's a wide range of things that people think are appropriate. But we have also come to quite a bit of consensus when it comes to minimum cage space and uh, diet and, and, and what's appropriate for them. So, you know, you can do whatever you want. We can't say, give us your guinea pig. You must surrender them to us and you can't go to the pet store. You know, we haven't been able to put the pet stores out of business, but they, their bottom line is about making money and that's what they care about most. The well-being of the animal, you know, they are, I don't want to get in trouble here because most people that work at pet stores, they care very deeply about animals and that's why they got into working at pet stores, especially, you know, the associates that will help you when you go in there. But they don't always know everything. And when it comes to cages, they don't even have 
the appropriate size cages for guinea pigs. So if you listen to them and they point out a cage that's in their store, it's not going to be appropriate. So that's one of the reasons why I started my channel. That's one of the reasons why I've been volunteering at the LA Guinea Pig Rescue and trying to spread the word is because it's not always obvious and it's not always, the information isn't always easy to get. Who's that over there? Why are you, why are you chewing on me? That's why you got surrendered to the animal shelter, Gary, because you're a nibbler. Nice, nice. You wild man. <laughs> oh, I love this guy. Um, all right, let's move on. Okay, let me see on the list here. All right, so we've talked about different houses. Now let's talk about a classroom pet. So is it appropriate for guinea pigs to be in the classroom? Now, here's my worry. My worry is if the guinea pigs live in the classroom, first of all, how old are the kids? Okay, and how much access do the kids have to the guinea pigs? And how responsible are they? Because we don't necessarily think that kids under 10 or 12 really should just be picking them up, walking around with them, pulling them out of the cage without some kind of supervision. So really, I think it boils down to, are the guinea pigs going to really be cared for well in the classroom? My second worry is that if the guinea pigs live in the classroom full time and they spend the nights there, my worry is that the piggies aren't going to have any supervision at night, you know, if they if if the school closes around four and the teacher goes home and the teacher doesn't come back until the next morning, we're talking, you know, more than 12 hours that the guinea pigs are completely without supervision. And what if they start to show symptoms of an illness? What if something happens that they need emergency care? There's not going to be anyone to notice and to take them. You're being so good, Gary Bear. Who's that? Don't nibble me. <laughs> So also, during the day, how are the piggies being supervised during the day if the teacher has to supervise the kids? So it just doesn't make sense. What I have, I've, I've talked to a number of teachers over the years, and I think what's most appropriate, if you're a teacher that has guinea pigs, maybe you bring them in once a month. Maybe if you live nearby the school, you uh, bring them in on a Friday and you know even you go home uh, at the lunch hour and take them home and they're just there as a special treat for a couple hours now you'll find that if you did something like that the the kids would be a lot more excited and they pay a lot more attention and maybe they'd even learn a lot more about the piggies if they weren't always there as just you know a piece of furniture so I think there are ways to enrich the students' lives with animals, and I think guinea pigs guinea pigs foster a lot of empathy for creatures, and, and that's something that we really need right now, is people caring for animals, caring about them. All animals. You're such a good boy. So, although I'm not opposed to having guinea pigs in the classroom, you've got to decide is it just that when you were in school to become a teacher or when you were envisioning your perfect classroom, it had a classroom pet like a guinea pig or something? I don't necessarily know if that is the best reason to have guinea pigs in the classroom if you can't meet all the requirements that they need. So that's just something to think about. Is it really in their best interest or is this just some idea, some vision that you've had of what's appropriate. Is it comfy? You look so comfortable, huh? <laughs> okay, let's talk about an easy one, swimming. Is it appropriate to put your guinea pigs in the pool? Now you'll see videos of guinea pigs swimming in the pool all the time. And uh, I made a troll video last year where I pretended to put one of the rescue piggies in the pool and then I just showed myself swimming in the pool with a GoPro to uh, give you a sense of, of 
the struggle and how scary it would be for them. Guinea pigs can swim. They don't like swimming. They don't want to swim. It's not appropriate to put them in there. In all these videos, you see the piggies struggling to find the edge of the pool. It's not fair. It's not right. Don't make them swim. Now, can guinea pigs benefit from being in the water? They really do benefit from having a bath. Do you need to bathe them every week? No. If they get dirty, is a bath okay? Sure. And for things like ringworm, a bath is essential. But if you're finding that your piggies get dirty once a week and you need to bathe them, then you need to ask yourself, well, why? Is their cage getting dirty? Do they, are they spending time in a carrier that is getting dirty? There's just, there's no reason why they really need a bath once a week. But guinea pigs can enjoy water but they shouldn't be swimming. So don't put them in water that they can't put their feet on the bottom and their heads safely out of the water. It's just not appropriate and it's not in their best interest. Don't get me started. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about dressing your piggies up. Okay, here's an interesting thing is that Guinea Pig Magazine, which is an awesome magazine, if you haven't heard about it, you didn't know it exists, it exists and there's an online version that you can get so you don't have to worry even about having it sent to your house you can get you can even get all the back issues online too so guinea pig magazine is awesome because all the pictures in there are your piggies they're our piggies people have all the readers have submitted pictures of their piggies and they highlight lots of rescues including the LA guinea pig rescue. The reason why I brought guinea pig magazine up is because they don't want pictures of guinea pigs being dressed up in costumes. They don't want pictures of guinea pigs wearing hats or little shirts. They just decided that it's not appropriate and you know you never know if someone is going to go too far with it. So let's talk about that. At the guinea pig rescue we have a bowl full of bows and little clip-on, um, they're barrettes, but they, they look like sunglasses that you'd clip like they're sitting on top of their head. We have a whole bowl of those things, and we do frequently have little photo booth corners so that you can take some cute pictures. We do think it's okay to take pictures, but is it appropriate to put your guinea pig in a costume that may be uncomfortable and force them to uh, wear it for a long period of time and parade them around. I don't think so. So, you know, if you're putting a little hat on them or a little clip and you don't pull their hair and you just take a picture and you put them back and give them a treat, then that may be okay. It's all about, are you hurting them? Are you putting them in a dangerous situation? How do you know if it's appropriate or if it's in their best interest? It's whether or not this could potentially harm them. So I think there's plenty of ways where you can take cute pictures with props or even with costumes, but you have to really decide, you know, is it safe to put this on your piggy? And, you know, most guinea pigs, they don't like it. They don't want to wear a clip on their hair. Some, uh, when it comes to little hats, a lot of times they don't even mind because they don't even know that it's on there. If it's a little lightweight hat, I think that can be really cute. But you also have to decide, you know, are you, if you make a picture, is it going to influence someone else to do something that might be harmful to their piggies? So take all of those things into consideration. But I have no problem with taking cute photos and, and using silly props. And if you want to know, you can get doll hats and various items like that on eBay and they might be some really cute accessories to take pictures with your piggies. So just make sure that you're doing what's in their best interest and that you're conscious of whether or not what you're doing could potentially harm them and whether or not they even like it. It might not be hurting them, but they just might not like it. So really keep an eye on their demeanor. Let's talk about one last thing, guinea pigs living outside. At the LA Guinea Pig Rescue, we only adopt guinea pigs out that are going to live indoors. We have certain cage requirements, but we have certain environment requirements too. Okay, it's gotta be a minimum of eight square feet. They need to be out of direct sunlight. 
They need to be safe from predators. And unfortunately, when you have them outside in something like a rabbit hutch or something like that, they're exposed to the elements, to fluctuations in temperature and to spiders and various other pests out there. So not to mention um, possibly mice or rats can get into the cage and steal their food and, and expose them to illness. So there's a number of reasons why we don't think it's appropriate for guinea pigs to live outside. But you would be surprised how many people have come to the guinea pig rescue and in their head they see the guinea pig cage as a rabbit hutch on their porch or somewhere. Sometimes people will say, oh, in the garage. Now, is the garage going to expose them to pests and creatures and a fluctuation of temperatures? Is the garage, is the garage cold? Um, all these things you're going to have to ask yourself. I don't necessarily think a garage, well, what, a, what is a garage? A garage, there's a, a lot of, a garage could mean a lot of different things to different people. And some people have finished garages. Some garages have central heating and air, and some garages are completely unfinished. You know, does the garage have cars in it? You know, leaking oil? There's just a million things. So. I can't say whether or not your guinea pigs would be safe in the garage, but if there's a fluctuation in temperature, exposure to pets, fumes, various things like that, then it's not appropriate. Because remember, and I tell people this, you're going to come to the rescue and you're going to try to convince us to let you keep them in less than an adequate you know, situation. And at the same time, there's somebody else that wants to love them, that wants to do right by them that doesn't want to put them in a compromised situation. So why should we, you know, adopt to this one person who isn't going to follow our suggestions, our minimum requirements, and, and there's somebody else out there who, who will. So please do the right thing. Please think about, is it in their best interest or is it just something that you've got inside your head for whatever reason you think it would be cute or funny or sweet? Mike, Gary wants to say hi. All right, well, I appreciate you guys taking the time to hang out with me and listen to what I had to say about this. Let's continue the conversation in the comments. All right, thanks, guys. See you next time. Be well. Mikey, you don't care?